Hey guys, and welcome to another series. A series that is very much overdue, I think. The Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I think we're going to go through all three games back to back. That seems like a challenge that's worth ending the year on and bringing the new one. Um, so, Spyro, man. Spyro is a very important series for me. Uh, even though I only actually played the first game. I have played now, or should I should say I played the first game back in the day. And these days I have actually played quite a bit of the second game. And I was actually quite surprised at how different it is. But we'll get into those. We're going to be playing the first one. Now, when we first got these remakes, a couple of years ago now, they actually started... I always lumped this and Crash together because they're quite often sold together. Um, I remember being quite excited when they uh, mentioned bringing Crash back because Crash is also a game that I kind of fondly remember. I never played a huge amount of it, but I did play the first one at least. Um, over my, well, she wasn't my cousin, she might, no, my cousin, we played Fur Fighters. I played a lot of it over a friend's house on the original PlayStation. And it was a game that I kind of really got into. I'm not 100% sure if I ever owned it myself thinking about it. I do have it on my shelf now. But anyway, I was quite excited about getting the Crash remaster. And I've played it with my missus and... To be honest with you guys, I don't think it held up. Crash was interesting. I remember being so excited for that remake. And when it dropped, I just remember thinking, oof, this has not aged well. And actually, I really don't enjoy the gameplay loop at all. I think that's mainly due to the punishing difficulty. But the actual remake was slightly harder than the original game. In fact, I think in places it was quite a lot harder than the original game. So that actually made me quite worried when they announced um, the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Because I was like, ooh, are they going to cock it up? Is it going to be as good as I remember? Yadi yadi yadi. And uh, to my delight, yes. Uh, I genuinely believe this is one of the best remake packages ever. Because it is literally a one-to-one -one remake uh, with some extra pop and a bit of extra paint sprinkled and I must admit I've been playing this recently on my Nintendo Switch and having this game portably on the go is amazing and this is one of the, the, the my favorite things about having a PlayStation Vita was the fact that I had the original trilogy of games even though I only played the first one um, <laughs> for reasons on the go uh, I really, really love that. I used to play it everywhere. That and G-Police on my PlayStation Vita. So to have a new system that has a remake of Spyro Trilogy uh, is absolutely incredible. And I'm so I'm so pleased with Toys for Bob, how they actually handled this and pulled this off. Because this is a really important game for me. This uh, when, when I first played this as a kid, my mum actually rented this. And my mum was a bit of a gamer, you know, she played a lot on the PC, but I usually knew pretty much everything that was coming out on the PlayStation, and I'd heard of this game, Spyro, and I'd looked at uh, videos of it, and well not video, we didn't have videos back then, but I looked at articles of it in the magazines, and it looked cool, it looked like my sort of thing, you know, a collectathon game involving a dragon that could breathe fire, mm -hmm. I like that, I remember I went over once, because I didn't live with my mum, I grew up with my dad. And she actually said she was going to rent a PlayStation game for us all. And we're all going to sit down and play it. And I was like, okay, this sounds actually badass. Random. And then she, because mum, my mum's fanatical about dragons. And uh, she brought home Spyro the Dragon. And man, that was one of the best weekends of my life. Sitting down there in that room, just with snacks and playing this for the entire weekend. Uh, it was just, it's still weird to me now thinking that my mom was playing on a games console as well. My PlayStation was bizarre, but this game instantly clicked with me. The characters, the music, um, you know, the visual style, it was absolutely stunning. The music is so good even now. And, you know, that <laughs> they were risking it with me by remaking this game because my god they could have fucked this up but they didn't 
They really didn't. They did such a wonderful job. Um, and it really did show kind of like the developers of, of the Crash remake that this is actually how you do it. You don't touch nothing. You just add stuff. You don't change hitboxes. You don't change enemies, collision detection or anything like that. You make the game as it was. Anyway, without any further waffling, because I've already done this three times and twice my microphone decided to disconnect. So let's go. Now we were originally going to stream this game. That was my original intentions all those years ago. In fact, what might be a better idea is to delete that. But then uh, we moved to this new house and we don't have internet. We have ADSL internet. Yes, ADSL internet in 2020. Uh -huh. A sub 10 megabit connection in 2020 with a 500k upload yes i'm not taking the piss did i mention we live in the city mm-hmm yeah yep but let's go Oh, uh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds, or is it six? <laughs> For a dragon's age, we now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Man, I always loved that intro. Uh, and it's pretty faithful to the original as well. So there's no bullshit with this game. It just kind of kicks straight off. And we are playing this on the Xbox One S, not the Xbox Series S. Um, or Xbox One X, I should say, not the Series. Now, this game is absolutely stunning. Now, it obviously doesn't look this good on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, <laughs> not even close. But it's still, you know, what they managed to do with it was very impressive. Um, now, this game really did... Should we say it? Should we say it? it? Reignite my sense of wonder for these kind of platformers. Because I remember when I was a kid and uh, we would have these... What would you call them? Collectathon platformers, I suppose, where you'd have like a central hub world and then you'd have, um, you know, uh, different worlds that you could jump into, which were the actual levels. And there were secrets and hidden items. And there was so it always felt like back then that there was so much to explore, so much to see, so much to do. Whereas usually, you know, for me, you just don't get that excitement any anymore. And playing this again for the first time when it released really brought that back. Um, even in the beginning, where he's uh, the dragon is alluding to the fact that is there six uh, or is there five or is there six worlds? I was like, oh my god, I hope there's a hidden world and blah 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 blah. And it all it really did make me think of Mario 64 at the time as well, with the paintings that you could jump into. I really wanted a game like that, and this, to me, controversial perhaps, but to me, this will always be like better than anything Nintendo's ever pushed out. This this is my platformer game and I love it to this day. Anyway, let's start rescuing dragons. Nestor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free 10 dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about mm. Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. 
Well, all right, Nesta, that is what we shall do. Now, one thing I like about Nasty Nork as well is he's quite a generic villain, but there's just enough kind of personality and character there. Uh, Spyro's got a good amount of tricks up his sleeve as well. We can charge, we can flame, we can jump, and oh boy, can we jump. So, basically, <laughs> I love that bit of animation. You know, Spyro's basically a cat. Which cracks me up. I swear when they were doing his animations and whatnot, they actually modelled him on a cat. Possibly a bit of dog in there as well. Who knows? Anyway, let's get to work because we have to get back all of the treasure and save all of the dragons in these beautiful, gorgeous worlds. And they are absolutely stunning. Now, I remember when I was a kid uh, and I was playing this game for the first time, these, like, hub worlds seemed so vast, so huge. Um, with, you know, so much to explore and so many vistas to see. But of course, <laughs> yeah, as time has moved on, they are not. They're actually quite small and self-contained, and that's okay. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him. Keep your horns on, Spyro. You have much to learn first. Yes, we do. What the dragonfly following you is doing? Uh... His name mm. is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. All right. And what I like as well is all the dragons you uh, rescue pretty much have unique... Well, I think they're all unique. They don't all have unique lines. Some of them have uh, the same sort of, thank you for releasing me line. But there's not many of those, you know. Most of them do have their own little personalities. And it's really cool. Right, there we go. Let's grab all of the treasure. If we push the back button, uh, we do get a little kind of like book up telling us, you know, everything we do need to find. Now, there's only 100 treasure on this mission, and that does uh, seem pretty light. 100 units of treasure. That's kind of weak source. As the games go on, you do get bigger levels with, you know, about 500 level, uh, 500 treasure or so. Possibly some more on the later on levels. I think there's like 600. Um, each area, of course, has a boss. Now, once you complete the prerequisite to move on from the level you can actually fight the boss you don't have to 100 percent the levels so there's a little bit of uh oof. Flash, do that again. the artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth but you are not yet ready spyro oh we're ready you must complete one of the other artisan lands okay so to fight the first boss all we have to do is finish one level which is pretty bloody easy when you think about it um, so you don't have to complete this game to complete this game, if you know what I mean. But, uh, you know, where's the, where's the sense in that? It might as well 100% it. Am I right? Or I believe, actually, this game goes up to 120%. Hey, hey Thomas. Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide. And, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that. Gee, I think that's actually going to happen quite a lot. I do like the map that they've added into the bottom as well. You can disable that, but there's no real point. They've also added skill points. Um, we have... Yeah, there's, I wouldn't say there's one for every level. There's actually not that many skill points to do, but uh, we'll get all of those. They unlock hidden artwork galaxy. Uh, yeah, gallery, that's what they do. Yeah, so it's not really, like, you know, great. But, hey, props to them for at least adding something you to go for. Now, I love the uh, fact that we can singe the grass and we can burn uh, the tulips and whatnot. It's really, you know, these little bits of detail were very, very impressive uh, back on the PlayStation. But I believe if we leave them a few seconds, they will kind of spring back to life. At least they did on the original PlayStation. There we go. They kind of like shake themselves off. So magical plants, I guess. Anyway, let's check out this tower. How are you feeling, Spyro? You good? You pumped? You ready to go? Good lad. The controls as well in this game are very tight. With one exception. There is one aspect of this game that I hate. That I've never really understood, I guess would be the way to say it. Never really understood the exact method. And that is, later on, we get super jumps. You don't have to worry about those for a while. 
but I never really understood those. There is an infamous level called the treetops, and ugh, less said about the treetops, the better. Let me tell you. So we're on 77 units of treasure. We've still got some treasure to find. Might as well clear out the hub worlds before we go into the levels. Now, if we go into this area, we should have an extra life, which is a Spyro statue. Always like that, you know. Now, I'm not sure why Spyro was the only dragon that seemed to um, escape his fate of being crystallized, but hey, let's not let's not think about that too much, shall we? This is a kid's game after all. Well, I say it's a kid's game. I think that's a little bit unfair. I haven't met many people that don't like Spyro in my time. Uh, this is our friend. Uh, he will take us on to the next. By rescuing ten dragons, then you may use this balloon to fly to a new world. Well, thank you very much, buddy. Yeah, so if we rescue ten dragons, then we can go on to the next world. Uh, so, as you can see, we really don't need to rescue that many more. We, we only need six more dragons, and then we can blow this joint. But, as I said, we may as well finish it all up. We're missing, like... Three pieces of treasure, so it's kind of annoying. I know these levels inside out. So where are we missing treasure? It's possible we're not missing anything there. This is actually a secret level, but we'll cover that in a minute. Unfortunately, this is one thing that I, I was quite excited about. So if we jump on all of these, we can unlock a hidden level. But the weird thing is, this is the only hidden level in the game. And it's right there on the first mission. It's kind of a bit strange, but hey, that's the way it is, I suppose. Right, let's go see. We are missing three pieces of treasure. I'm guessing they're going to be here somewhere. That would be my guess. We've killed all the enemies. So there's any treasure behind here? There's not. Hmm. Intriguing. Well, that's embarrassing. Ah, there they are. Lel. I thought we'd grab those. Cool. All right, that'll do, donkey. That'll do. And I like that fact that it comes up saying level 100% complete as well. The only thing that I wish they would have kept from the original game is uh, you will see. Now, there is. Is there a way that we can bring it up? Uh, there doesn't appear to be a way. Uh, we can bring it up, but the actual UI, let's go to Stonehill, the UI is not 3D, uh, it's 2D, uh, as you can see there at the bottom, whereas in the original game they were 3D characters, uh, 3D numbers and that sort of thing, and it looked fantastic, it really was a next generation experience, and they pushed the PlayStation to the absolute breaking point, and uh, you know, it, it was so bizarre to see it, because there was always sacrifices on the PlayStation, you know, if you had really good visuals, you would have clunky controls and poor performance, um, or animation would suffer, for instance, but with Spyro, it, oh man, they just nailed it, they absolutely freaking nailed it. Now, of course, we have Sparks, Sparks is indicating how much health we have, he goes gold, blue, green, and then he disappears. Every level will have some kind of critter, here we have sheep, we flame the sheep, we can feed Sparks butterflies, and that's how he gets his health back, which is, again, another thing that I always really liked. Now, having Sparks, like, if you get hit three times and Sparks disappears, it actually makes the game a little bit trickier, because as you can see, Sparks is flicking gems into us, whereas uh, if we don't have him, we have to manually pick up treasure, and that actually does, is a little bit trickier than you'd think sometimes. Now, wooden boxes, you can flame or you can ram, whatever the hell, doesn't really matter, smash those bastards open. Metal cannot be flamed, so metal we have to ram. Anyway, let's Lindar. Welcome back, Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. Damn, he likes his watches. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, so these are your checkpoints. You have the fairies that give you a little blast of their magic wand and save your progress. Which is, you know, useful. Some of the later levels are sli slightly tricky. Uh, but I wouldn't say this game is hard at all. This game's actually very easy. Now, let's go... 
grab up all of the gems. Now, what surprised me, because obviously for years and years, I only ever played the first game. I was very surprised to see just how different Spyro 2 was. Uh, there's no dragons to rescue or anything like that, as far as I can remember. Though I'm really, really looking forward to getting to those two games. Freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. Thingamajigger. Take you back to the artisan home. All right. First, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. <laughs> you know, and I genuinely do like Spyro. He's he's a he was, he was like Sonic, basically. He's got that snarky kind of uh, kid with a bit of attitude. He was basically uh, what Sonic tried to be, I think. And they really did integrate his personality pretty well into him. They could have gone for a cutesy, you know, dragon, but I'm glad they went with uh, the personality that they gave him. He's, he's kind of a snarky asshole kid, and I like that. Right, so this secret here that we're in now took me ages to find when I was a kid. It's so weird now, knowing that, uh, well, going through these levels, and when you know them pretty much inside out, sometimes I think I would love to go back to playing this game for the first time again. But then I think that about a lot of games, you know, like Resident Evil, um, Zelda as well. I love, yeah, especially Ocarina of Time. Imagine experiencing that game again for the first time. Shenmue as well. Now we can go down here, and there is a dragon. Another. This is another bit that uh, tricked me out quite a lot when I was a kid. And all the little subtle animations with chests opening and stuff. Everything's so satisfying. We've rescued Gavin. Oh, hey, Gavin. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. God, the dragons are so cool. He stays strong, like, like me. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, Spyro's not having any of it. Look at that guy. I like him. He had his uh, coffee flask, I suppose, with loads of mugs around his belt. I love the personality. I would really like to see them bring Spyro back and give him a brand new adventure. Now, I know the later Spyro games on the PlayStation 2, uh, etc. And I believe they came out for... I don't know if they came out for the original Xbox. I mean, I guess they did. They weren't very well received. And I don't know why, because I, I remember I played Year of the Dragon way back in the day. Uh, and I actually quite enjoyed it, to be honest. So, I never got far in it. I only rented it. But I can't really remember why... Um, or what the rub with those was because I remember you got different breaths as well you got like uh, ice breath, wind breath and all that kind of stuff so maybe we'll go check those out as well once we're done with this but we're going to be playing this for a long ass time I love how smooth this game is as well it's, uh, it's only 30 FPS but it's a good 30 FPS whoop Whereas on the Switch, it, yeah, I mean, it, it tries to get to 30, but uh, oof. that's not often. But it's certainly playable. Spyro, my friend. How about Gildas. You bet. For the longest glide, press the jump button at the top of your jump, and try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. <laughs> I love the characters, man. They're so cool. You know, if any freaking video game deserved like a, a series or a comic or something, and maybe it did get a comic, I don't know. I would have loved to have seen them do something with Spyro because the world, the lore, you know, um, the universe as a whole, I guess, is really interesting. Now, this little fucker here, this guy needs some horns up his ass. They're actually quite hard to horn their asses. So we're probably going to flame the bastard. These are egg thieves. There are 13, I want to say, in the game. I could be wrong about that. There's a few of them. And they always carry eggs. And that is another one of the collectibles. Now, they didn't, they didn't go overboard with collectibles in this game. It's not ridiculous like, oh, I don't know, Banjo-Kazooie 2, for instance. Um, but there's enough, I would say. Can't speak for the other games in the series, of course, but uh, 
what they gave us with this one, I think, was was decent. Right, so return home. What are we at? We've got the egg, we've got all the dragons, we've just got 16 pieces of treasure left to find, and I'm pretty sure all those treasure pieces are around here. But even now, I am absolutely stunned with how good this game looks. I would actually like to see them redo this for the PS5 and the Xbox series consoles, and maybe even patch the PC version, get some ray tracing in there. Can you imagine this? Looking at this game like this with some ray tracing. Oh, yes. Yes, please. I will buy this on the PC eventually, just, you know, because I want to support this game. I mean, I already have it on the PlayStation, the Xbox. So I might as well get the PS, uh, the PC version as well. Just because, when it drops down in price, obviously. Having said that, the Crash uh, collection and this don't really ever seem to drop in price. Which is a bit unfortunate. Right, so we're missing four pieces of treasure. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be around here somewhere. Let's have a little scooch around. Now, there is like this invisible force field here. It looks like you can, uh, you know, break on through to the other side. But unfortunately, you can't. Now, last time I played this level, a long time ago, there was some treasure that was out here somewhere. And because of the hills, it's kind of hard to see. And talking of uh, things to do, yeah, Stonehill, burn the, burn the tulip. So on this level, there is one tulip, and there it is. It's the only tulip on this level. If you burn it, you get points, because Spyro is a dragon, after all. So he's a destructive bastard, whether he likes to admit it or not. Okay, so we are literally missing four pieces of treasure. I guess they could be down there, to be honest. They could well be down here, I suppose. Might just be a little nook somewhere. Or like four chests or something. Now, usually I have a method to get through all of the levels, or at least I used to. I used to have a set path through every level, and I perfected the collecting of treasure. But <laughs> we're talking mega years ago, man. I can't remember that shit. Ah, there's, there they are. Usually just tucked away by a... a there we go, 100% complete. Usually tucked away by in a corner somewhere. Now, these early levels are pretty easy to 100%. Later levels do get significantly more complex. Oh, we're almost out of time already. Boo. So in the next video, we should pretty much be able to finish off the artisan world. It's not very long. Neither is the next world, for that matter. Now, once you've killed all the enemies, when you return, they do respawn, but they drop orbs instead of gems. Now, if we collect like 100,000 orbs, it feels like that. We actually get an extra life. So if you wanted, you can farm lives it's just not a very efficient process because you can see the dots above uh spyro's portrait there if we go here you can see just how many we need to get we need to get like one two three four five six yeah so it's, it's gonna be about 20 which really sucks let me tell you now these flight missions never been brilliant at these so we're gonna leave those flight missions to the last uh, part of each world, I think. There's one in each world, and uh, they are free flight missions. They're cool, they're fun, but at least the first two are actually really tricky. Uh, no, actually, I think it's the third one that's really tricky. It's really savage with just how perfect you have to be to actually do that run to actually get all of the treasure in one shot but you know we shall persevere so guys anyway i'm going to leave this here this is the first part of spire of the dragon i hope you're going to enjoy this game with me i know i am i've been looking forward to doing this for so long uh, and you know i always know it's a good game because i've already done this once on the playstation 4 uh, i'm currently going through it again well i'm right at the end of it 
on my Switch. And now I'm going to do it again for YouTube. So, yeah. I love this game. So, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, until next time.